Okay, so let's now understand how to get the precise prefactors right in these Feynman diagrams. I've been careful to avoid this until now, and the reason is that this requires understanding a little bit of combinatorics to get the factors right. In particular, it involves understanding something called a symmetry factor. So let's now understand that. Okay, so I want to remind you that the general expansion of the generating functional involved a double exponential. If I expand all of those out, then what I get is a sum that looks like this. I sum over all possible numbers of vertices, and the sum that I'm doing takes the following form. There are four functional derivatives coming out of each vertex, and I sum this, each of them raised to the vth power. And furthermore, this is sum over all possible numbers of propagators. This part comes from the free generating functional, and it looks like this, raised to the power of p. Okay, and uh, if this isn't clear, please just uh, take a look back at the double exponential appearing in the, in the generating functional. Now, um, let's understand now the point is that when we draw a particular Feynman diagram, for example, let's say this one, then this actually represents several different ways of contracting functional derivatives against sources. The question we need to under answer in order to get the right factor in the Feynman diagram is how many different ways does it represent of contracting functional derivatives against sources. Okay, so to explain what I mean by this, let me dig into this example a little bit further. The question is, how many different ways? So for example, here's the picture. Now, this thing has one vertex. It's clear that from each vertex, at each vertex, there are four functional derivatives coming out. In other words, there are therefore, if there's one vertex, there's four factorial ways to rearrange the functional derivatives coming out from the vertex. Okay, Now that's if there's one vertex. If we have v vertices, there'd be four factorial to the v different ways to do that. Now, if there are p propagators, so in particular in this picture, that would be just four factorial straight up, because v equals one. Now, if there are p propagators, there are then p factorial ways to rearrange the propagators amongst themselves. We're starting to get the idea. Now, each propagator has two sides. So therefore, there are two to the p ways to rearrange the two sides of the propagator. Okay, for example, it could be done this way, or you could flip it around and do it the other way. So there are two to the p different ways to pick the sides of the propagator. And finally, there are v factorial ways to rearrange the vertices amongst themselves. So therefore, this picture, or rather any picture, represents a total product of 4 factorial to the v times p factorial times 2 to the p times v factorial different patterns of contractions. Okay, so we should therefore multiply the expression that we get by this combinatorical factor. Now, let's recall what's happening over here. If you look back here, you can see there are a bunch of factors in the denominator. 
there's in fact a 4 factorial to the v, there's a 1 over 2 to the p, there's a p factorial and a v factorial, those factors in the denominator seem to exactly cancel this factor right here. So what this might make you think cancels this factor right here. So what this might make you think is there is no extra factor to worry about. In other words, the extra factor in this Feynman diagram is simply 1, so there is no further combinatorics to do. Okay. However, this is not quite right. So let me explain why. The reason why is that we have actually overcounted the number of different ways to rearrange things. The reason why is that we assume that every possible rearrangement would give a distinct configuration. This isn't quite true because some rearrangements can cancel each other. Let me explain what I mean by that. So for example, if you go back to that picture that I drew earlier of that one Feynman diagram, then there was something that it had a piece that looked like this. Let me imagine breaking this up a little bit. So there's two functional derivatives coming out from the vertex, and then there's a propagator connecting them. Let me call this A, let me call this B. Now, notice that it's not actually true that all rearrangements give you a different contraction of functional derivatives against propagators. Because, for example, if you switch these two, in other words, if you switch the two functional derivatives coming out from the vertex, and you also switch these two, then that gives you something that looks like this, BA, but again, BA. In other words, this is actually the same pattern of, of contractions. This is also true for the other side of this diagram. And it's also true for switching these two propagators themselves. So in other words, we have overcounted by a factor of 2 times 2 times 2 equals to 8. This factor of 8 is called the symmetry factor of the diagram. It is typically called S. Okay? So in other words, to calculate the full contribution of this picture to the amplitude, what you should do is first draw the picture then use the Feynman rules to write down the amplitude that it corresponds to. Eh, sorry, I seem to have run out of space again. Uh, so use the Feynman rules to write down the amplitude that corresponds to this picture because everything is starting from one point. You can see that both propagators start and end at the point x and then you integrate this point x everywhere with the weight lambda. And then what you do is you divide by the symmetry factor, which is in this case 8. Okay, So you divide by the symmetry factor. And you will then get exactly the right answer for the Feynman diagram. So it's, um, it's a fun exercise in pure thought to figure out what the symmetry factor of a given Feynman diagram is. Basically, the symmetry factor is related to the number of ways, number of operations you can perform on the diagram that leave this unchanged. To summarize, what you should do is to figure out the symmetry factor, figure out how, how many ways you can change the diagram while leaving it unchanged. So let's do it for this particular diagram. I will now give you a second just pause the video and figure out what the symmetry factor is. Again, remember, you want to see how many ways you can change this diagram, while how many different ways you can permute the individual objects in the diagram amongst each other while leaving the diagram itself unchanged. So go, go ahead and give it a try. <laughs> 
Okay, I assume you gave it a try and you surely got the answer four factorial times two. And the reason why is there are four propagators, all who are identical, which you can permute amongst themselves, giving you the four factorial. And the two comes from swapping these two vertices. Okay, and uh, don't worry, you'll get much time to look at this in a whole new problem. But just to summarize, to figure out the right factor in the Feynman diagram, apply the Feynman rules naively without worrying about the combinatorics, and then divide by the symmetry factor of the diagram. Okay, so we are now almost done with this chapter. There's just one more thing I want to discuss, and that is how to organize the sum into a sum over connected diagrams. So what do I mean by this? Generic contribution to Z of J is typically involves a sum over many different diagrams, some of which are disconnected. For example, there'll be a term there that is the product of these two diagrams. Okay, And this is clearly disconnected. Here, I don't want to really define disconnected. It's clear what I mean by disconnected, right? If something is disconnected, I can draw a line between the two diagrams and separate them into two. That's what disconnected means. It's intuitively obvious. So now let me introduce some more uh, notation. Let me label each connected diagram by I. In other words, I runs over the set of connected diagrams. So for example, it runs over this, it runs over this, it runs over the other one that we've seen so far, and so on. Then the generic disconnected diagram, oh, and let me also call the value of the diagram C sub i. So C sub i is the actual value of the diagram, it's the actual amplitude that you get from applying the Feynman rules. Then the generic disconnected diagram gives a contribution which looks like this. The contribution is d equals to 1 over sd times the product over all possible diagrams that appear, ci to the ni. Here ni is the number of times diagram i appears. And SD here is a new symmetry factor associated with rearranging the connected diagrams amongst themselves. So, and just to be clear, um, this symmetry factor is different from the symmetry factor we studied in a minute ago. That symmetry factor had to do with um, sort of inside each connected diagram dealing with those rearrangements. This S sub D comes from rearranging the whole connected diagrams amongst themselves, not internal rearrangements. So if you think about this for a second, you'll realize what S D is. SD is always simply the product over all the connected diagrams that appear times the factorial of the number of times it appears. In other words, I can now write the full generating functional in the following way. I can write Z of J equals to a sum over all possible sets or numbers of times each connected diagram can appear times a product over the set of connected diagrams, then the symmetry factor, and i factorial, times ci raised to the power ni. Where again, i here runs over all connected diagrams. However, it's sort of interesting to note that I can rearrange this by flipping the product and the sum. So this expression is equivalent to the following. where I've just flipped the product and the sum around. 
And now this is clearly equal to the product over the exponential of ci. So in other words, what is this saying? What this is saying is to figure out z of j, what you have to do is figure out each connected diagram and then exponentiate it. So a nicer way still to write this is the following. This is equal to the exponential sum over i c sub i. So in other words, what you should do is to figure out z of j, figure out every connected diagram, add them all together, and then exponentiate the whole thing, and that will give you z of j. Okay. So z of j is the exponential of the sum over only connected diagrams. This, this sum, the sum over only connected diagrams, occurs quite often. So what we often do is we define the logarithm of the generating function in this way. In other words, I'm going to call i sub w of j is defined to be the sum over i c sub i, where this is the sum over connected diagrams. And z of j is the exponential of i w of j. So w is just the logarithm of the generating functional up to a factor of i. Okay, that concludes today's lectures. In the next time, we'll actually use this technology to calculate something.